According to the Icelandic journalist Sue Whistleblower Johannes Stefansson, alleged that some of the payments made to a company where ex-Justice Minister Saki Shangala is a trustee were supposed to be channeled to the Swampo Party for an internal party election in 2014. Today on One had an exclusive interview with the journalists who exposed the hashtag Fishrot scandal to confirm the allegations. <coughs> We went and, and checked out this place where the cold storage is supposed to be in September, but we found no cold storage, which m may not be, be a surprise because Johannes, who, who uh, f after, according to what he says, made this agreement with this company uh, under orders from, from his bosses, uh, made it only to uh, as a way as a ways and means to to pay these uh, two million Namibian dollars to uh, uh, what he says is a half a million to the CEO of Fiscor and one and a half million uh, to the party uh, which he says uh, was supposed to go to help uh, uh, re-elect Bernard Esau and, and and some other people who were fighting in, in this Swabo campaign but uh, it's not only his words, but uh, actually we have documentation from that time where a bookkeeper of Mer Maria Seafood is asking Johannes about stack of payments made to J&T, as it's called, which appears to be James Hatuikulipi and Thompson Hatuikulipi. Uh, one of that is, as the bookkeeper says, what is this ERF-198? I can't remember it. Which Johannes replies to him as saying, oh, it's uh, one and a half million for the party and 500 for the Fiscor quota. So, yeah, we know that the owners, the owner of, of ERF 198 is uh, a trust called Kampadara Trust. And uh, from what we've seen in documents we've uh, seen, we, we uh, think that, well, it shows that Kampadara Trust is, is uh, owned or at least affiliated to uh, two of the people involved, James Hatuikulipi and Saki Shangala, and this company ERF is, is registered at the address of Hanganeni Investments. Today on One recently interviewed the director of the Anti-Corruption Commission, Polis Noah, who said that the video evidence and documents released by WikiLeaks hashtag Fishrot scandal were not sufficient enough to prosecute the ex-ministers as well as his son-in-law and associates in Fishcore. For clarity, today on one asked them to verify the authenticity of the video. To be clear about it, he, he never received any bribes because we and, and our, our uh, uh, the journalists we worked for uh, work work with in, in Al Jazeera were journalists, not uh, criminals. So we of course didn't pay him any bribes, but he suddenly uh, asked for money. He also asked for other stuff and and. And he suddenly, uh, he certainly, most certainly, he, he told us where he wanted the money channeled and how, and talked about if it wouldn't be handled that way, that would pose a serious risk of, of money laundering and and other stuff, which you can hear him say on the in the video. So yeah, the authenticity of it we can we can verify. And the interview we did, we did with him was uh, uh, that was suddenly there, and, and that was most suddenly w what he said. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We, you know, people have to, we're not a court of law, so of course, you know, I can just imagine that the ACC with having uh, seen what they saw, probably thinking that this is not going to be good enough for court, but that's why we have uh, uh, institutions like ACC and, and others in Iceland and Norway and, and other countries uh, to investigate and, and verify. and. And from what, what I've heard, they have had, well, at least one year to verify the authenticity of the documents uh, that they, they also received. So uh, I think that, yeah, from that standpoint, it, it shouldn't be too hard to them to, to make a decision on, on whether uh, not to make it a criminal case or not. For those that missed the hashtag Fishrod documentary, stay tuned to One Africa TV for the repeat, which is tomorrow, the 26th of November at 9 in the evening.